The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Everyone is talking about how pervasive sexual abuse is in Hollywood, but there's an alarming and disturbing trend that no one seems to be talking about. That's assault against those who are more, more vulnerable, those with special needs and intellectual disabilities. According to a year-long NPR investigation, people with intellectual disabilities are sexually assaulted at a rate seven times higher than those without disabilities. Ariva, I know how passionate you are about this topic. Why do you think this hasn't been in the limelight? Just the way historically we've treated people with special needs in our country. If you think back to the early you know, 1920s and 30s, people, if you had an intellectual disability, you probably were forced to become sterilized. You were put in a hospital, you were sterilized, you were institutionalized. People with intellectual disabilities were thought to be subhuman. They weren't thought to be like you or me or the rest of the population, and they were treated that way. So when we're having this big discussion about the reckoning around sexual harassment and assault, Individuals with intellectual disabilities aren't even in the conversation. So I'm so glad that right here on The Doctors, we are having this conversation because it's such an important topic. And this is the most vulnerable population there is. They can't speak for themselves. They're not taking to Twitter or Facebook or sharing their stories the way we see a lot of the high-profile actresses doing. But it doesn't mean it's not happening in this community. And this study breaks that wide open and now we have to do something and about it. And it's a perfect storm for a predator, for somebody who, who wants to do that type of behavior, that they're more likely to be able to get away with it. Well, they're afraid of it. 85% of the people that assault individuals with intellectual disabilities, it's because they know them. There's some yep. connection. It's a school teacher. It's a counselor. It's a relative, a friend, a neighbor, someone in the neighborhood. So this isn't happening to individuals by strangers. These are the people that are around them that hopefully are there to protect them and to be their advocates, but unfortunately, in many situations, are taking advantage. So if we know the data that there is a seven times increase in sexual assault if you have a disability in this scenario, what can you do to protect someone who maybe can't protect themselves? Yeah, a couple of things that are happening that I think are really positive. One is educating the parents. So there are centers all over this country that offer parent education because sometimes parents they don't know how to talk to their individual, their loved ones about sexuality, about feelings, uh, you know, normal feelings that someone with an intellectual disability will have around romance, around sex. So the parents need education. And, and, also, and also knowing to use the proper terms. When yes. you're teaching your children, teach them vagina, teach them don't use code words for them, and teaching them about what's appropriate. And oftentimes we see people talking to a 50-year-old like you're talking to a 5-year-old, mm -hmm. and that's not appropriate. So not not only educating the parents, but the individuals themselves. They're training courses and classes where they can learn, and it's just a question of how do they learn. You may have to use uh, pictures, photographs, you may have to do interactive uh, techniques, but we can teach them to protect themselves, so to family, know school. what's a harmful relationship. Schools, community centers, group homes, uh, wherever intellectual disabled people live, where they work, where they are, they need to be protected. And we have an obligation. If we see something, say something. Is there someone who may be around our kids that you need, need to be looking out for? Yeah, I, I think, unfortunately, the profile is that person that's closest to you. So we often overlook the cousin, the uncle, and not to say that all cousins and right. uncles are predators, so I don't want to make that statement, but sometimes it's that person that's closest to that individual. Uh, and again, that person with a disability, they're not necessarily going to be able to articulate. They may think that someone abusing them is actually someone showing them affection because they're often ostracized and isolated and they're lonely and they want mm. any affection and they will misinterpret abuse for they may a not healthy even relationship. Interpret it as abuse, correct? They may not even interpret it. They may that, think it's a healthy why, relationship. And we have to be diligent as caregivers. We have to be diligent as parents, education, education, education. So again, I'm just so happy uh, that we at the doctors are making this a part of the conversation because these individuals, they deserve to be protected just like any other population. And if you want more resources on how you can protect a loved one or how to report a sexual assault, we'll have resources at thedoctorstv.com.